Centre. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Donna and I'm married to Royce and I have three children, Nathan, Aidan and Edie Ray. Romans 8, 29 and 30 says, For those whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he may be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined he also called, and those whom he called he also justified, and those whom he justified he also glorified. Predestination, my ticket to heaven. Now I can live as I please, do as I please, think and behave as I please, because I've been predestined, chosen by God, written in the book of life. My place is pretty secure, I'm there. What I failed to understand was that once we became a Christian, we had to become Christ-like. I asked God into my life at the age of five. I distinctly remember my Sunday school teacher praying the prayer, and I said it quietly in my heart. My life didn't change though, meaning I was brought up in a Christian home. My parents were strong Baptists. We went to church every Sunday. I went to youth group, youth and church camps. I was even on the youth committee and later taught in Sunday school. So I was living a Christianized life. But the wheels fell off during my teenage years. The conflict began. Why couldn't I do what the cool kids did? Why couldn't I go to parties? Why couldn't I date non-Christian boys? Well, I did. I rebelled. I left home at the age of 19. Slowly I started following the world standards, partying, dating non-Christians, and not putting God first in my life. But I believed I was a Christian because I went to church every Sunday. I got married to Royce, who gave his life to God through my Christian influence. In fact, I brought many people to church, so concerned about their spiritual well-being, but I was never truly convicted of my sins. Over the past year, my life fell apart. I guess God had had enough. He brought me to my knees after a breakdown at the beginning of June. In his grace, he opened my eyes to my sinful, rotten, hardest stone heart, and I repented. I truly repented, and he forgave me. It hasn't been easy. I was in a spiritual high, then, I real, then reality set in. And I realized, man, this is hard work. But you know what? The path I'm traveling now is so much happier. I'm living in the light. I now have a personal relationship with God. He has changed my way of thinking. My priorities are different. And I now desire to do good. So why baptism? Well, praise God, I'm finally a Christian. And I want you all to know that I live for him because he died for me. He has lifted my heavy burden and I have the hope of eternal life with him. In closing, my parents will be receiving a copy of today's baptism, so I'd like to thank them for the patience and the love and the many, many years they've spent praying for me. Carl Vane, Alice, Peter and Francel, you never once gave up on me and you were a great support to Royce during this time. Thank you too for all your prayers. And finally, Royce, for sticking by me and believing that God's work would be done in his time. I just wanted you to let you know, Donna, the reason we didn't give up on you is because we know the power of the gospel. And God, in his grace and his mercy, has uh, shown you a true a way to follow him. And it's so wonderful that you're here. So based on your confession of Christ as Lord, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.